boost control solenoids. So this is the new Pro Series boost control solenoids from Holly. This is both the increase and decrease solenoids all built into one nice build aluminum block. Part number 557201. I'm also gonna give you an overview on how dome pressure and CO2 and boost and what it all means. So these were the old CO, uh, boost control solenoids. And you could either use one of these with uh, compressed air off the compressor of the turbo or with CO2, or you could pair up two of them, tee them together with a couple fittings and get the same result here. So what I wanna show you, the reason why a lot of people have been switching over to these and why this is a benefit is they respond a lot faster. These are actually bullet style Mac valves and uh, these are the old school um, Mac valves. They have a little bit slower of a response time than these. So we're always in the quest of trying to find every last hundredth of a second. And these have kind of come in handy when it comes to trying to get boost following uh, dome pressure. So what we have here is a CO2 tank and there's two gauges. One, this gauge here, is letting us know how much pressure is in the bottle. <clears throat> and this one here and then this one is how much pressure is in this line so the reason this is important is because we are going to tune the holly software based off of the amount of pressure that's in this line so if you wanted to make adjustments you just dial your regulator here and then co2 comes in here we tell the boost control solenoids what to do which we're going to get to shortly and co2 comes out of here or vents through here on top of a wastegate. It seems like a lot of people that are new to boost control or turbo cars don't really understand this, but the numbers that we're programming in all of this is dome pressure, not actual boost pressure. So I have this wastegate to take apart and show y'all, but we're applying CO2 into this cavity and there is your spring. So when you hear people refer to wastegate springs or on the spring only, this is what it is. So different manufacturers make different tension springs. And if you notice what this is doing is it's trying to keep this valve shut, okay? So if the spring is overcome by pressure on the bottom side of the valve, right? This is where your exhaust is at. If the spring gets overcome, it starts to open and it vents your exhaust pressure through here. And you start losing boost because it slows down the turbine speed. So what we're doing now is we're using CO2. So a lot of you guys that have been doing this for a long time are like, yeah, we already know, but some of y'all are new to it. So I just want to, to teach everybody from, you know, Jump Street here. So we want to keep this shut, okay? So when the spring is not enough, we need to apply pressure to this cavity. So when this is all tightened up, it seals off and we wanna to try to keep this valve shut with pressure. So in order to do so, the fastest and most accurate way to do so is with CO2. And the best way to do that is with a good pair of boost control solenoids and obviously programming it properly. So we're gonna show you the layout of a turbo system and then we're gonna get into the programming of it. So over here is, I've got, obviously I've got one wastegate off of the car. But if you look, this car has two wastegates. So each bank is a V8, so each bank is fed by one, you know, one wastegate is fed by each bank. So the exhaust is coming through this pipe. It's creating pressure here to spin the turbine wheel of the turbo, okay? Nothing that we just talked about has any relativity to the exact number of pounds of pressure that you will experience on this side, okay? So this is the discharge. This is where all the, the power comes from, right? Or it's where, where it comes in here and it goes out here and it goes into your intake manifold, which I still don't have, but that'll be here shortly. Either way, for this explanation, your pressure is measured on this side, okay? Your boost pressure is measured on this side. This is drive pressure. So this is the this is the hot side back here, okay, the rusty side. 
the hot side, the turbine side. This is back here. This is what we're really controlling, is how much pressure we have in that exhaust system to allow that turbine to spin <clears throat> faster and faster. So obviously the faster it spins, the faster we spin the compressor wheel. So there's a couple hoses that you see sitting around over here. And if you notice, this, this wastegate is the same as the other wastegate that's on the table. So what we have is this is for on the car, this is the CO2 line, and it tees off or Y's off right here, and it feeds both wastegates. So this Y right here, that singular line, is fed by the boost control solenoids that we just looked at. And right here is a dome pressure sensor. So the dome pressure sensor is what's telling the ECU how much actual CO2 pressure we have up here in the top of the wastegate. So the ECU won't know what to do if we should increase or decrease dome pressure unless we can tell it how much we have. So this bottom side of the wastegate is to actually help it open. That is fed from the compressor. So when it comes off of the compressor of the turbo, it, it tries to balance out pressure on the bottom side to the pressure on the top side. And then we continue to apply CO2 in excess of what this is putting out so that we can keep those wastegates shut. So I'm going to button this all back up and hopefully be able to tune the PID on these boost control solenoids and show you in real time how they work. So give me a minute, I'll be right back. Got everything mounted back up in the car and I wanted to just give you a quick overview on how this is uh, all plumbed up. Got the CO2 tank here and as you can see we've got 110 psi is our pressure that we're going to be working with. There's 500 pounds left in the bottle. It's a little hard to see but this is inside of the car and then we've got CO2 coming in here from the bottle going out here okay and then it is going through a bulkhead on the firewall up here to a Y and then down from the Y it, it comes off and it hits the top of both wastegates so there's one there's the other we have our dome pressure sensor you can see that there and then we have our reference line from the compressor so this is how I just teed them together on this but these precision gates have two ports on the top and the bottom so I just ran a jumper from here to here and then from here this all shares the same cavity up underneath that diaphragm we looked at earlier and it is fed from the compressor discharge so this is a uh, precision pro mod uh, 76 and this has got you know the little fitting here but most of the borgs and precision all of them have it uh, if not you can also grab it from the intake manifold as well but this is just how i did it for simplicity because of the way this was built so to recap here we've got exhaust coming in hits the wastegate here and then exhaust this one's kind of hard to see there's a little bit too much stuff here there you go there's the header comes down there's a v-band and in for where it feeds the wastegate so it comes through you've got pressurized air pressurized exhaust gas coming through here trying to lift this open it's trying to push it open we want to slam it shut. So I'm going to go to a screen capture and show you how we tune these, uh, these settings on the boost controller to control this accurately. All right, so here we are. We are setting up the new boost controllers and uh, boost control solenoids. And I'm assuming that everybody's already probably seen uh, some of my other videos on how to wire them and uh, install them in the car. But uh, we're going to assume that y'all already know how to do that with a pin map and whatnot. So we're just going to get right to it on how to tune the new boost control solenoids in. 
So here's our boost setup page. We have dual port. Um, we're gonna, the solenoid configuration is gonna be dual Holly, dome pressure only, that we're using a uh, CO2 bottle, and boost versus time, because this is a drag race application. I have this car wired for a master enable input, but you don't have to do that. That's a, a different topic. This value here is how much dome pressure, like we talked about before, is going to be applied to the top of the wastegate in addition to whatever the spring pressure is, okay? So our launch target with this setup is gonna be 17 pounds. And this is strictly for testing purposes. Don't send me messages asking me how much dome should I put on this thing to leave up this racetrack and this tire. There's too much to, you know, too much info there that's missing for me to give you a, a decent idea. So we're going to first go to dome control setup. So the, the first box you see is fixed, okay? So just be, if you are not using a CO2 tank and you're using an air compressor, okay? Don't click compressor. Compressor is referencing the compressor of the turbo, all right? So it's still gonna be fixed. So this application with CO2, or if you were using a onboard air compressor, it's going to be fixed. The fixed pressure value is like we just talked about, 110 PSI, that's what's at the CO2 tank uh, coming out of it. That's what the regulator set to. Target rate limiter, I always set it high, 100 PSI a second, and then you need your dome pressure input. Just like we, we showed on top of the wastegate, there's a dome pressure. So when you click on this drop down it will give you the ability to pick any of the pressure transducers you have configured in your input input output uh, ICF. So we're gonna click dome pressure. And this is where we're gonna be working here is the controller setup. So the P term, I term, and D term is a 20 some hour class for me to explain it all to you. We're gonna skip that and we're just gonna go into testing it and learning what it does and how it responds. I made a video on this exact setup with the older boost control solenoids. So if you need to reference that, um, but for this, this is what we're going to do. So the CAN settings are 30, 10, and zero. I'm gonna leave them in here and I'm gonna show you why you can't just buy these boost control solenoids, put them in the car and then hope for the best. The what we're gonna to have to play with is boost versus time. So this is our ramp, okay? So drag race application, boost versus time, time at the bottom, dome pressure numbers at the top, okay? And the last cell I always put zero PSI so you can bleed off all the pressure and not lose any more CO2. So this looks really erratic. Nobody would you know, use this to go down a racetrack. But the reason being is because if we can get it to follow a pretty erratic curve, then we can get it to follow a, uh, a, a normal curve a lot better. So these, I, I always select the number a little bit higher than what we have this set at. So we're 17 PSI here, we're 19 PSI here. And on this setup at half a second after the release of the trans brake, I've got it rolling into 60 PSI dome pressure. It's going to hold that amount of pressure until 0.9. Right, they're done here, 0.9. And then at 1.0, it's gonna dump down to 10 PSI. And then at 1.2, it's gonna come right back up to 60, ride 60 until 1.6. And then at 1.8, it's gonna drop to five. And then at 2.0, it's gonna hold that and, and ride it out. So all these numbers can be changed to suit your needs. Uh, typically in a eighth mile drag race application, you know, you're usually under seven seconds or something. So if, if you're running a quarter mile stuff, you know, you're gonna to wanna to extend this out a little bit longer and have a little bit more resolution. I like, cause I, I do a lot of radial tire stuff. I like a lot of resolution right here. So, you know, in the first 1.2 seconds, if you're on a good track, you're usually pinning them shut by like 0.8 into the run anyway. But for testing purposes, you can manipulate this however you want. In my other video, I also showed how to hook up your air compressor to mimic a CO2 bottle so you don't have to go ripping through a bunch of CO2. But in this, we're just gonna use the CO2 bottle that's here. 
So we've got 30, 10, and 0. And that's what we're going to start with. Those are the pre-canned uh, settings from Holly. So if we go into our strip chart, I'm sorry, I'll show you this. Your strip chart's up here, okay? So if you press strip chart to open this window, I already have it open. And there's already a little bit of data in here. So we're in the strip chart. Now strip chart lays out very similar to your data log editing screen. So if you hit play, what it's doing is it's showing you uh, whatever we're monitoring over here. And for whatever values we have, you have two different, there's two different uh, panels here that I have set up. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. So for this test, we are going to click here and go to edit views. And this looks familiar, I'm assuming. So in your data logger, it works the same way. You just kind of click and drag, drop them off wherever you want, and grab the one you don't want and dump them off into here so you don't have to look at them. So I'm using this right here, this block, and we're going to rename it uh, Boost Control Setup. I've got my master enable in there, the trans brake signal, because it's all based off of the trans brake, boost time, the uh, boost value, which we're not going to see anything because, remember, boost is what's in the engine. We're talking about dome pressure. This right here, target boost, is what our dome pressure is, okay? Because our, our setup is dome control only. So target boost is what we want to be monitoring. And then dome pressure is what's actually there. So we're targeting here. This is what we actually have. And then we've got a uh, boost solenoid duty cycle, the boost fill solenoid, and the boost vent solenoid. So there, remember, there was two different solenoids in that aluminum block. One is to fill, so it adds the CO2 and one is to vent, okay? So we've got this set up, and we're gonna hit okay. Yes, we're gonna save it. So now it populates this. So your screen is probably all gonna be on one panel. I moved this by left clicking. If you left click right on the word, hit panel, and then you can move it, okay? So you can move it to panel two. So this one here, is already on panel two. So boost fill and boost vent right here are on panel two. Now, by checking these boxes here, we're monitoring them. So whatever panel they're in, is that's what we're monitoring. Now notice we're monitoring boost time. We don't need to do that. If you have a box over here checked, then it is, it's, it's actually monitoring it. Over here is giving you this right here, your scale, all right? So we're going to look at individual boost fill and vent solenoid duty cycles. And we're going to look, the more important part is dome pressure and target boost. These are the two values that we're really hunting. So by left clicking again on target boost, we're going to scale it. Typically, it's already populated at auto scale. So we're going to take it out of auto scale and we're going to put in a minimum. So for this test, I put minus 20 as a minimum and maximum of 100 PSI. The reason why I put minus 20 is so that the line was actually up here as opposed to down here. If it's down here, we can't, you know, we can't tell if there's any oscillation or movement. So I wanted to raise it up off of the floor a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. And then we've got some good resolution up to 100. Now, for a little bit better resolution, we're going to change this to a maximum of, remember, my scale only went up, to, or my boost versus time curve only went up to 60. So we're going to change this to 70, okay? Because we want to be able to see if it overshoots. Now, whoops, I did the wrong one. Look at that. You guys caught me. Move that back. Dome PSI, maximum of 70. And target boost, maximum of 70. So the reason why you want those two scaled together is so that you can see the traces overlay each other. So right now, this is two separate lines, okay? If we were to move target boost, say we'll change the minimum to, uh, let's go minimum of uh, minus 25. Now we have two separate lines. 
Well, for this testing purpose, that doesn't, that doesn't help us, okay? So we're gonna change that back to minus 20, and now we are overlaying on top of each other. The boost fill and the boost vent are the same way, zero to 100, zero to 100. So when we grab the trans brake, we're gonna see some movement here. So our can settings of 10, 30, and zero results in what we're about to see. So you're gonna hear me grab the trans brake and then you're gonna hear the solenoids make a whole bunch of noise. So I'm gonna grab the trans brake, I'm gonna hold it for a second or two, and then I'm gonna let go and it's gonna follow our boost versus time curve. All right. Oh yeah, and these new solenoids are noisy. So uh, typically mount them underneath the hood. I mounted them where I mounted them inside of the car, uh, just strictly to test some theories. So we paused it. Now we get to look at what we got. So as you heard, it was, it was oscillating. Once we had a leveled off position here, it was oscillating. So that's not good. You can see these swings are crazy, right? They're real, real erratic for boost fill and boost vent. So we have to make a, a modification here. So we're gonna go back into our PID control here, our dome control setup. And let's just do something. I, I already know what numbers are gonna work good in this, but we're going to move this to, let's just cut this down to 20. Just the P term, let's cut it down to 20. Let's go back to our strip chart, hit play, and here we go. So, it's got a little less oscillation. Notice the oscillation up here is gone. Okay, not so, not completely gone, but at most part, it's gone. It seems to, it, it's following the curve pretty close, right? Um, but we still have a little bit of oscillation. We don't have any overshoot, which these solenoids have really done a heck of a lot better job um, for boost control than the older solenoids. So we're going to make another change here. Let's take this I term and let's cut this down to eight from 10. And re-engage our strip chart. We hit play, grab the trans brake. So that's, getting, that's getting a lot better. Um, we don't have uh, much oscillation here or overshoot, minimal oscillation here, we can do better. So the whole, the whole point of this video here is to show you that you need to, you need to kind of tinker with this stuff, okay? So there's 15, five and zero in my five minutes of testing prior to turning on the screen recorder. This is kind of what I came up with. So hit play. That looks pretty good. Now, some of y'all are gonna look at this and go, man, it didn't follow it, it didn't lay on exactly, right? Well, look at our, our time count here, right? So this is, this is a less than a second from here to here, okay? We're talking about maybe five numbers here behind. So and this is grabbing the trans brake. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to put a boost curve in this thing that is a little bit more realistic. So we'll go to boost versus time and let's go. We're going to get it all in by 60 and it's going to be linear. So we'll left click and hold, drag it on over to 0.8 seconds, right click, fill row values. And then we are going to highlight all of this 60 pounds and we're going to fill row values. So that's a pretty, pretty common boost curve for a small block single turbo deal. Uh, on a good track. So let's uh, see what we get in our strip chart with a regular boost curve. All 
right, so that looks pretty good to me. Uh, we've got, we've got, if you look down here, we have very minimal, well, zero uh, vent duty cycle going on while it's, while it's holding it. So what it did was it came up, it peaked it, and it dropped our duty cycle for our fill solenoid down to an area that'll hold it at 60 PSI. And the moment it ran off the timer, the duty cycle from the fill solenoid shut off and the duty cycle from the vent solenoid picked up. So this is, in a nutshell, the new boost control solenoids. They, in my opinion, have done a very, very big change to the older style uh, solenoids. They, they react a heck of a lot better. Uh, you, you have to know that there's about nine, nine foot, nine and a half foot of, uh, of hose between the solenoid and the weight and the dome pressure sensor that's on top of the wastegate. The old solenoids would take a whole heck of a lot more work to get it to actually follow that close. So that's all I got for y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed this and it helps some of you. Uh, see you later.